last year in November 21, I think. So you know about my tea bag thing? Because yeah. I told you all about my tea bag. Yeah. That's good. Um, what else do you know about? I'll tell you something you don't flipping know about because I've just signed a contract. I've been commissioned by a proper publisher to write a book on this. Very good. On this style, yeah? Yeah. With a deadline, I've had an advance. Not much of an advance, but I felt I feel proper grown up. <laughs> Should have had to wait until I'm um, 71 to before before it happened. But yeah. I've just now got to write 45,000 words and draw 150 pictures before June. <laughs> my, my problem is um, that I don't, I, and I'm not saying this facetiously, I really don't know what I'm doing. I just do it by instinct. And the hardest thing to do when you do something by instinct is to break it down so that you can explain it and teach. So. But the thing is, the wonders of the internet and iCloud, I've got, I've got the fight, I'm up to about 12,000 words by now. Um, and, but I have to remember, I have to put a note in the manuscript, this is, I'll draw a picture for here. The drawing the pictures is the easy bit for me. Um, but I can, I can access the file on my phone and work on it and it updates in the cloud and then I go, it's unbelievable. Um, and I'll just show you, this picture here, look, <coughs> This is my, I've just finished this sketchbook, tiny little one, and I did that. We came up to Grasmere, we stayed in the Wordsworth Hotel, it's about a lovely hotel, and I did that sketch on Saturday afternoon in the residence lounge when the tree was up. I'm quite pleased with that, but it's a bit twee for what I normally do, but I actually drew that in situ, and it, that was just before the third glass of claret and I'm just sliding off the settee um, but in this book so on the 1st of January look I started and, and I've not put any sorry for those who haven't seen me before I don't do line and wash the traditional way which we which is with a pencil sketch and then watercolor on and then pen last I do it the other way around I start with that which is straight in with pen and I started on the 1st of January and I can't show you that all of these because, look, I've done a drawing a day and there's no colour on any of them because a lot of these are going to form demonstration sketches for chapters in my book. You see, I'm thinking up here for dancing, down there for dancing, up here. I don't know what the thing is. But, you see, I can remember, and I'm going to use these to, to demonstrate how I apply colour. Um, and stuff. I watch a lot of telly. Uh, well, no, sorry, I'll correct that. I don't watch a lot of telly because there's nothing on the broadcast TV now. So oh, I'm, I'm, I'm dead cool. I, I stream lots of stuff. Um, so I don't think it's in this book. Is it in this one? So this one is one I particularly... See if I can find it. There. <coughs> <clears throat> that was a scene from a TV program. It was a, a program called DCI Banks. You must have, you must have watched it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Set in Yorkshire. Um, and that, it literally stopped me in my tracks when I saw that. It came up, so I pressed the pause button and grabbed my book and drew that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's not quite the same as going on plein air. But it's not bad. And it, it was a really high contrast thing. So that's... That's the kind of thing I do, straight in with pen and then add some colour afterwards. So I'm not a proper painter, you see. It, it's all, oh look, and I'll show you the very last sketch I did, which is that one. Oh, it's up there. Um, that was in, Sol in Saltaire, in Salt's Diner. Has anybody been to Salt's Mill? Yes. Yeah. Yes. My favourite place in the world to go. But I should have checked because the big Hockney thing that, that I went to see, it's closed. So, but, so I, had, I had a very nice lunch uh, and I drew that. And the waitress came over and said, am I on that? I said, no, you're out in the back having a fag and she left. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, yeah, oh, there, there's, a, there's a topical local one. Look, that's my second favourite place. I love that place. 
that topia, but here's one. Um, there's one I did. I'll turn the book that way around so you can see it properly. I did that. I did that for a YouTube demonstration. And there's a horrendous mistake in there. <coughs> yeah, Levin's Hall, yeah. Oh, Levin's, thank you. And when I came to paint the sky, it, oh, it was horrendous, it was horrible. And I was filming this for a YouTube thing. And if you go on my YouTube channel, I'm sure you can find it because I had to rescue the sky by spraying it. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm happy with that, but you can see, if you look really closely, there's all kinds of hard edges in there which I wasn't pleased about, but I quite like the composition. You know, it's not, that's the other thing I try and do. It's, my, it's the graphic design background. Um, hang on. I'm just working out. Ted said work till, till half past two. Yeah. I thought you said two o'clock, and here I am still <laughs> blathering on. Um, I, I try not to do traditional twee full on landscapes. I look for something that's a bit more a bit more dynamic. Um, so there you go, that's that's what I so yeah, that's my little sketchbook. I've got loads and Ted, I've got some reproduction sketchbooks there that I've done. There are two new ones since I saw you last so you can peruse those. And if you haven't got cash, look I've got a lovely I've got one of these. And as long as the phone's connected, we'll be fine. Oh, and the other thing I've done since I saw you last, did I tell you about my telly thing? Yes. This. Did I tell you about that? Has anybody seen it? Yes. Oh, did I tell you all the, all the stories then? No. Oh, excellent. <laughs> wow. Right. In, I was here in November 21, so I think um, in probably, it was in one of the lockdowns just after Christmas 20, and you know you get bored and you're on the internet a lot, and none of the sites, I, I wouldn't be bothered about sharing any of the sites with you, it's not that kind of bored internet browsing, I thank you very much, and I filled in this inquiry for um, an art contest forgot all about it and then I got a phone call out of the blue from a young lady who said um, can we set up a Zoom interview for we'd like you to consider appearing on this TV programme I went, oh, okay what's that then? Crime Watch <laughs> uh, and she said um, anyway I had the interview the Zoom interview and I must have ticked the boxes and she said right, yeah I think he, ooh, I think he'd be a good fit because these TV people all talk in flipping jargon, don't they? We need to think outside the box and all that nonsense. And she said, but there's just a couple of criteria that if you'll agree to before we can sign you up. I said, all right, what's that? Number one, um, it's a pure watercolour competition, so you can't use a pen. And I went, I gasped, I went, <gasps> for me it's like, I thought, you know what, let's go for it. Because you have to learn, you have to try things, I think. Um, and number two, you have to be an amateur. So I said to her, define amateur. And it's interesting, their definition of an amateur is, is financial. Nothing to do with the quality of your work. She said, if you had to live on the money that you earn from artwork, could you exist? I said, good God, no. You're an amateur. <laughs> Now, to me, an amateur and a professional is the quality of the work. Yes, a professional earns a living from artwork, but it's, 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 anyway, we won't get into the pedantics of that. So there you go, and I didn't know they were going to use my mugshot for the, the whole thing. So if you go on My Five and look for Watercolour Challenge, that comes up. It's on the Sky Planner, it's on everything, it's, it's scary. Um, and it went out in January. And I got everybody primed on Monday afternoon, January the 20, whatever it was. I'm going to be on telly. And I switched on, I sat there waiting, cup of tea, digestive. And it was somebody from Devon. <laughs> somebody at Channel 5 had put the wrong cassette tape in or whatever they'd done. Well, my phone was beeping, John, where are you? What, what are you doing? 
So I emailed the producers and within 10 minutes I'd got an answer back saying, sorry, it's a, your episodes are on next week. And do you know, the very next morning, this big bunch of flowers arrived for me. <coughs> from the I thought, that's lovely. Bit weird, bunch of flowers, you know me, Yorkshire bloke. <laughs> so, it was filmed in May 21. And we had to wreck it. That's Castle Howard in York, just outside York. And that was at six o'clock Friday morning. Looks lovely, doesn't it? It was flipping freezing. And I mean freezing. Um, and the first thing I did, I pulled into the car park. We were parked here, but there's a big field here. Um, behind there, we were all parked and all the production crew. And they hadn't seen each other for a week. So about 30, 30 cars and all the, all the crew. And I parked next to one of the producers and somebody else. And then one of the other competitors got out of the car next to me and jumped out and went, John, great to see you. I love that workshop that you did for us at Pickering Art Club. <laughs> and I went, Nettie, shh. Because they were all here, we, I'm supposed to be an amateur. <laughs> anyway, they sat us down, and I was, I, I got prime spot there. Uh, the young girl there, Jenny, was fat. What fat was it? Do you remember the three people that were on with me? There was an architect, there was a bloke called Dave who was an architect, Nettie, who runs a farm, and Jenny, who was about 26. And after I'd met her, after about half an hour, I called one of the crew and I said, can you find out what she's drinking? Because I'd like a pint of that. <laughs> she had so much energy and enthusiasm. Unbelievable. But Dave and I, the architect, we worked out that we had shared this similar sense of pure real humour. So we made a pact to try and get on TV as many groany puns as we could. <laughs> so I, I was out the trap straight away and Fern Britton came over to me. Me and Fern. <laughs> and I'm stood there and she asked for the very first time what do you make of this view and how are you going to tackle it because they had to ask it so many times because there were different cameras but she came up and she said John what do you think of the view I said Fern and I got a dig in straight away if I was allowed to use a pen I would be in seventh heaven drawing all that architecture and these lovely shapes I said but I'm not so what I'm going to do is use these shapes and the lovely leading of this lawn but the main thing about this view is the shadows and I'm going to feature the shadows very strongly in my composition and she stood there going mm, okay yeah I said in fact I'm going to put Hank Marvin there and I'm going to put <laughs> Bruce Welch there they all laughed the cameraman laughed Fern laughed but she is an actress um, but they didn't use it did they they cut it out, they must have spotted what we were trying to do. So, and it was the longest day I've ever had. Started painting at seven o'clock. What time do you think we got a drink? It was in lockdown, it was Castle Howard. It was half past one before we got a drink. Because if you've been to Castle Howard, um, the restaurant's kind of way over there. But I'm thinking it's a produ TV production. I'm sh I was certain there was going to be a van. Doing bacon butties and teas, no. They gave us breakfast, but breakfast for them was like these sugary bars. Well, by 10 o'clock we were kind of hacked up. You had to eat things, because if you didn't, you'd fall over and there'd be pains grey everywhere. Anyway, um, it was a fabulous experience. I've just, I've actually just got my paintings back from them. And that was another, that was one I did. Um, the Temple of the Four Winds. I'm not too displeased with that, but bit, it would have been much better. But then the highlight of the whole day, of the whole weekend, was that on Gothland Railway Station on the North Yorkshire Moors. Has anybody been to Gothland? Yeah, yeah. It's like a wind trap, isn't it? <laughs> so, let me, let me find a close up. There you go. <laughs> I've got one, two, three, four, I've got five layers on there, a scarf, gloves, two pairs of socks, and they gave us those scrunchy things, you know, that keep your hands warm. I've never ever painted in gloves before, so I had a, two of these scrunchy things in the gloves, I had a couple in each boot, and I had various others in different parts of my anatomy to keep me warm, and we were sat down, and the raptors were in blankets, I felt like I was brought out of the home for an afternoon <laughs> trip. And, uh, and the rain was absolutely 
it was horizontal at some point. Oh, it's in this book. And I had this sketchbook out to the side and I left it open at, at that there so that I could be working on my painting. But that kept being in the camera because I thought, I want people to see what I can do. And every so often, I did this. And I, but then, that's my sketch of Peggy. I don't know if you can see. If I tilt it, you can probably see better. Um, I was allowed to use pencil, which is a bit weird. Because that's line and wash. It's just from the pencil. So I did the, the thing and I did all the, the stuff. But if it, can you see these, um, these little spots? That's not a stunning, stunningly brilliant watercolour technique. That's rain. But all joking aside, I look at that and I'm instantly back on that freezing platform. Because that's what a good sketch it, it, it should do. And it was, it was brilliant. And the thing, Peggy, they were really proud of Peggy. 105 years old was Peggy. And the best thing about Peggy is, in between filming, we were allowed to go over the bridge and climb on because it was they had the, the engine and the coals and it was so lovely and warm. So there you go. That was my um, that was my experience being filmed for the telly. But that's one thing I've realised. When you see yourself on television in HD, it's a scary thing. I mean, good grief! Look at all it look lines. Yeah. Anyway, I booked a, an appointment with the plastic surgeon. <laughs> He's rejected me. Right, let's see if I can find one in here that kind of encapsulates. Oh, there's a different one, look. I don't normally draw things, and I don't normally draw people. See if I can find one. See, normally what I do, there, that's when I, we went to stairs for my birthday last October and I did that if we're going to be posh on plein air I was actually leaning on the wall there and I, I drew it that that um, pen sketch took 10 minutes and then I just added a blob of colour now other times and especially when I'm in a situation like this and there are vocal people in the audience that might say, what do you think? That's another view of stairs. Put some colour around there Put some, and try this. I'm an obliging sort of chap, I'll try it. And I'm gonna show you something now that, let's bear in mind, that is what I'm going to try and aim for today because I'm happier with that than a fully painted. Um, this particular one, I did it for, um, an art group near Wakefield and there were lots of men in the front row saying put some trees in so I obliged <laughs> what about some colour there and what about this and before you knew it and I knew which way it was going and I, I just let them go I said well there you go what do you think of that and it doesn't look bad if you um, crop it with a, a, a mucky mount if you take some of that out it, it kind of works and this is kind of mossy green um, but I'm still not as happy with that as I am with that version of the same scene. See? Look. Now I know which of the two I prefer. That one because it uses far less paint and we all know how expensive Daniel Smith paint is. So I mean, I still get palpitations when I think how much paint I've used on that. But all joking aside, that's, that's what I'm trying to drive at, the, uh, the difference in treatment. That's all right, it's perfectly all right, it's a decent drawing, I'm not too happy with it. The thing about that is, and this is what I try and, and, and teach, and this forms chapter four of my forthcoming book. Um, you don't know where to look on there, because I haven't directed your eye to a specific part. Whereas on there, you know to look there. That's setting the context, you know, the, the fells in the background. I've deliberately left off the trees because I think they're, they're all right, but I don't think they're needed. And I, I much prefer that. And the wall, just with a, a clean drawing with no, no, and somebody said, yeah, but wouldn't it mean better if you'd drawn lots more 
stones there and had a bit more colour there. I said, yeah, it would. And then we end up with this. There's the point and you've missed it by... Anyway, so I hope you bear with me while I um, try and ruin this.